Welcome back to another video, it's fantastic to have you here, my name is Bones and today I'm going to teach you how to make a side-scrolling background for your game. Let's get started. We'll make the background side-scroll infinitely so it gives off the illusion that the player is moving. We'll first have to acquire a background. I'll draw a few hills and the sky and some clouds. To make sure your background repeats seamlessly, Make your canvas twice as large and copy paste the background next to itself. Then fix any imperfections on the connection both on the left and right side. Import your background into Unity and change the settings to fit your needs. To cover the entire camera I will give the background 3 pixels per unit then change filter mode to point and compression to none since this is pixel art. Place your background into the scene, right click on the transform component and hit reset. This will put your background at world coordinate 0 on all axes. Copy and paste it and move it to the left and right while holding control until you cover the entire camera. For me, 3 background copies were enough to do this. I'll copy it one more time and move it onto the right side so I have 5 backgrounds in the scene. It's time to make it loop infinitely. Create a new C-sharp script, I'll name it background. Create a float speed variable, I'll give it a value of 0.025. Remember that at the end of a float value you add an F to specify that it's a float and not a double, otherwise you'll get an error. In the update function we'll write gameObject.transform.translate vector2.left times speed. This line of code will move the object which holds this script to the left multiplied by the speed variable. We'll now write one of Unity's built-in functions. Void on became invisible. This function will be executed once the object is no longer visible by any camera. It is worth mentioning that this includes the scene's camera, so when you're testing with this function you should check maximize on play. Once this background object is no longer into the view of the camera, we teleport it at the x-axis coordinates of the farthest right background object. In my case the value for the x-axis is 21. And this function will say transform that position equals new vector 2, 21 for the x-coordinate, comma, transform that position that y. Awesome, we've now created an infinitely looping background. At the request of one of my subscribers, I'll also show you how to make randomly spawning objects that your player can dodge. I've created this ground and this player just like in my 2D platformer tutorial series. You can watch episode 1 and you'll know how to make this if you don't know already. Then you'll create two new C -sharp scripts, Spawner and Obstacle. Create your obstacle prefab and give it the obstacle script. In the scene, create an empty object and drag it at the same level as your platform, to the side of the camera, and give it the spawner script. For the spawner script, we'll need a public array of type game object and three float variables, one for generating numbers randomly and the other two for a timer. In the start function, we'll equal timer to start timer. In the update function, we'll say timer minus equals time.delta time if timer is less than or equal to 0, then rand equals random.range 0 obstacles.length. Then we'll say instantiate obstacles square brackets rand transform that position quaternion dot identity and then timer equals start timer. We'll set start timer in the inspector. I'll set it to 2 seconds. We'll also drag and drop our obstacle objects in the array. In the obstacle script, we'll create a speed variable and we'll say gameObject.transform.translate vector2.left times speed. We'll create the onBecameInvisible function and we'll say destroy game object. This will destroy the obstacles once they go off screen. Congratulations, you have now created a randomly generated obstacle spawner. That is all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to drop a like and leave a comment. Helps out me, helps out the channel and most importantly, it shows me that these tutorials are helpful to you. Again, thank you for watching and goodbye.